When you kill an enemy in a video game, there's typically one of a couple different things that an enemy will do in order to kind of signify that they have finally died. One of these common solutions is to go into sort of a limp ragdoll state. In this state, an enemy will basically drop to the ground. If they die from an explosion, maybe they get flung off in some direction, something to that effect. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you not only how to simulate physics on an enemy so they can go into this ragdoll state, but also how to set up our player so that way we're able to grab it as skeletal mesh from any point on that body and drag it around while it's still in that ragdoll state. But before we go ahead and jump into that, if you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. Now let's go ahead and get started here with the uh, with creating our ragdoll uh, our ragdoll skeletal mesh as well as our as well as setting up our players so that we were actually able to grab our, uh, our our skeletal mesh that we have here in the scene. So I, I want to go and start by adding in a skeletal mesh that will actually ragdoll and so that way we can actually make sure all this works in the first place. So I've gone ahead and imported the third person a uh, few assets from the third person template. Uh, so let me go and open up uh, the mannequin character and then mesh and I actually have two here. Uh, I'll go and drop these both into the scene. We, we can go and play around with each of them here. So let me go ahead and move both of these in. And we'll have these both uh, go into a ragdoll state as well. Let me actually go and rotate these around and face these towards the plate a little bit better. There we go. All right, so to actually make these go into a ragdoll state, it's actually pretty simple. If we actually go and hit simulate right now, you can see that they'll stand out perfectly fine. There's no issue whatsoever. They're, they stay in the exact same position. But if we go and click on either one and set simulate physics to true, you can see it immediately falls to the ground and goes limp in. We actually get some pretty weird reactions here, um, but this actually shows how we actually have to set this up. So if we actually go and click on both of these, set them both to simulate physics, then whenever the level starts, they'll both go limp and they'll both just fall straight to the ground. Uh, and this is actually possible by the physics asset that's tied to each of these skeletal meshes. I won't go real deep into the physics assets for these, uh, but if you would like, you can go and have a look at each of the skeletal meshes physics assets, and that will kind of give you an idea of how these go into the ragdoll state. So now going on to our player, our player is going to be where we have most of our work. So let me go and grab our VR pawn. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and grab our, we don't need to do, actually we do need to do one thing here in the viewport, uh, but we don't need to necessarily be able to see what we're doing since it won't have any physical space. We're going to want to apply two physics handles. So I'm gonna go and grab two of these. I'm just gonna call this physics handle left and I'll create another one. Let me go ahead, physics handle. I'll just go call this one right. And each of these will can, will be tied will be used in order to uh, drag around our ragdoll skeletal meshes. Uh, these will each be tied to separate hands, so that way you can actually grab two different objects at the same time. Uh, since only one, since we can only call each one to a single point, we want to make sure that we have two one for each hand. So now let's go and jump over here to our event graph, and we're going to want to. And I'm going to use our grab left and our grab right input actions for this tutorial. We're going to use this in order to, uh, in, in order to not only find our rag dolls, but also to set up grabbing and moving them around, dragging them around, all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna pull this over. And I'm going to go ahead and drag out from press. I'm going to do a line trace by channel. And we'll go and start here with the left one, by the way, too. So I'm gonna start here with our left hand. So let's go and grab our motion controller left. If you're in Unreal Engine 4, I believe if you're in anything in 426 or later, I believe they fixed it in 427. But if you're in anything 426 or earlier, then you'll actually have down here a couple variables. I believe they're called left control and right controller. In these variables is where you'll have to grab your motion controller from. It'll actually be within those references. So you'll wanna grab your motion control from there. Uh, but anyways, going on to here, once you have your motion controllers, we're going to go and grab our motion controller and we're going to get the world location. That's going to go into our start value for our line trace. Let me go and drag that in. And let me go and create a reroute node here because we're not done with this yet. There we go, drag this all back. 
And now to get our endpoint, we need a way to actually determine where we want our line trace to end. So we can actually do this by getting the forward vector from our motion controller. Our forward vector will actually go out from like in the direction of the fingertip. So if we actually look at it, it's actually going, I actually have here uh, only the Vive ones, but it'll actually go out in this direction. If you want it going in a different direction, that's entirely up to you, but I'm going to be using get forward vector. And I'm going to multiply this. This, multi this multiplication that we actually apply here to our forward vector will actually determine how far in the direction we want to go to. And so we actually want a float input. So I'm actually going to do a float. We'll do 100. 100 isn't too big, but it's good enough for what we need for this example. And then we want to add this. And actually, I'm going to put our world location in the top add in our top add node and our multiplication value in the lower, and that's going to go into our end value. Uh, beyond that, we don't need to do too much else here. I am going to set our draw debug type to uh, for one frame. That'll just allow for us to see. Um, actually, I'll do for duration, we'll sit and we'll leave at five seconds. That way we can actually see where we're trying to grab at. It'll just make it a little bit easier on us. Uh, if you're working in Unreal Engine 4, um, actually, I'm, I'm gonna do this anyways, but we can actually go and make an array and I'm just going to tie this to self. This is just going to, this just so we can be a little bit safe, make sure that our hands, our body, nothing like that will actually get in the way. Uh, this is definitely more problematic if you're using the Unreal Engine 4 pawn. So now we have our line trace going. Now we need to determine what to do after we finally hit or in some cases, maybe we didn't hit an object. So first let's actually go and check to see if we did in fact hit an object. So I'm just going to run this through a branch and the reason I actually want to check as well is because some of the code that we're actually going to put in here is actually going to cause problems and it'll cause errors if we don't hit something and we try to continue going. So this is just going to be a little safe, uh, a little safety net here to kind of check and make sure that we're actually hitting something first. From our out hit, I'm actually first going to break this because we need all of our values here from our hit result here. And we're going to go ahead and start by actually checking our hit component. We're going to check to see if it is simulating physics first. And I'm just gonna go and pass that through a branch again. We're going to have quite a few branches here because we want to do quite a bit of checking before we actually go on and grab and start dragging around our, our uh, skeletal meshes and all that. So first we're gonna to check to make sure it is simulating physics. Then we wanna check our hit component and we want to see if it is a skeletal mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and do a cast to skeletal mesh component. Go and drag that forward. There we go. And this will also kind of act as a sort of check as well, just make sure that we actually have a skeletal mesh. You can see we actually have a cast failed in case it isn't a skeletal mesh. In this case in the scene, we really only have skeletal meshes, so we should be fine. Now that we have our skeletal mesh, at this point we've now confirmed that we do in fact have a skeletal mesh and that our skeletal mesh is simulating physics, which is all the things that we want. Um, this is also important too, because if we're not simulating physics, then our physics handle will not work. We actually need at least one component that's being grabbed to be simulating physics. So we need, we do need to make sure that it's simulating physics. So I'm gonna go and grab our physics handle now for this hand. And we're going to grab component at location with rotation. So let me go and drag this through. The component we're going to drop in is going to be our skeletal mesh component. Our in bone name is going to be our hit bone name that we get here in our break hit result. And I'm actually gonna create a couple reroute nodes here because we are going to need a reference to this again here in a second. So let me go ahead and create a couple reroute nodes there. Our location is going to be our impact point. So let me go and drag that over. Again, I'm just gonna kind of clean this up a bit. And then finally, for our rotation, we're going to get socket rotation. And let me actually clean, uh, we'll go and leave it right there. And our bone that we got here from our break, from our hit result is going to go into our socket name. In most cases, the bone can actually be used as a socket replacement. And this is one of those cases where we're going to want to. And then our return value is going to go straight into our rotation. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> and finally on the release, let me go and drag this down just a little bit more. Finally on our release, this is gonna be the easiest part here. We're just gonna grab our physics handle left and we're just going to release component. Let's go and drag this out here. 
And there we go. And now I'm just gonna copy and paste all this. I'm just gonna drag this all down. You know, copy paste all this. And we're just gonna use all the same setup for our right hand. So we just need to replace a couple of, uh, a couple of references here and there. So right here at the beginning, our motion controller left, we're going to change for a motion controller right. There we go. And we're also going to come right up here. We actually need to change our physics handle here to our physics handle right. And we also need to change our physics handle here at our grab component location, at location with rotation and drag that into our target there. And there we go. So that, that takes part, that takes care of being able to grab our component. Now we need to actually be able to move around our skeletal mesh once we finally have it in our hand. So in order for this, we're going to come down here. I'm going to grab our event tick. And I'm actually going to run this through a sequence because we'll want to run this, we'll want to run two execution nodes, one for our physics handle left, one for our physics handle right. So this will just kind of simplify things down a little bit. We're going to start with our physics handle left. We're going to get grabbed component. And we're just going to check real quick to make sure that this is valid. We always want to make sure that whenever we're dealing with something that may be out of our control, we always want to make sure that it is valid. So checking to make sure that is valid. And then we're going to set target location and rotation. Uh, and I'll explain why this is a set target here in a second. Uh, and not a definitive final position. Uh, and then our location rotation, we're just gonna grab our motion controllers again, and we're just going to get world transform. I'm gonna go and split that struct pin, drag this back a little bit. And our location rotation get fed into our target location and our target rotation. I'm just gonna do the same thing here for our right hand just copy and paste all that and change out our references here to physics handle right and motion control right. I have those backwards though. I'm going to drag that down. Our physics handle right will come right over here. And there we go. So the reason we're actually saying a target location rotation and, and the reason that this is phrased in this way is because we when we set a location rotation, it's very possible that whatever it is we're grabbing will not be able to reach that location and that rotation. So we can actually determine how much an object has control over our physics handle, how much it, it gets dragged around, um, how much weight it has applied to it by simply going to our physics handle. We can actually affect, and we can actually modify our constraints as well as our interpolate target. These all control different aspects as to how our physics handle interacts with any physics object. I'm gonna leave all of these active and I'll actually show you how this works. Um, if you want something that's a little bit snappy, a little bit snappier, because this is going to look not perfect, but it'll look a little bit more on the realistic side. But if you want something that's a little bit snappier, then you're going to want to probably uncheck all of these boxes because it will allow for our physics handle to essentially have almost full control over whatever physics objects we're grabbing. Um, and it won't really be affected as much by gravity as, or weight or anything like that. So, uh, but that kind of takes care of all uh, of all of our physics stuff on our player side. So I'm gonna go and just bring this all up and clean this up. And now we're gonna just go and jump into VR. So I'm gonna go and jump into VR and we'll go and give this a test run. All right, so I'm already here in VR. I'm actually using an index, so it's a little bit sensitive to, uh, to, to our grab input there. So <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this as best as I can. Um, but you can actually see that this is our line trace. That's what's going to determine if we actually hit our skeletal mesh. You can actually see we have both of our skeletal meshes here. So I'm going to go and start here with this one. We're going to go ahead and grab, for example, the leg. And you can see it does kind of get dragged behind. And you can actually see, too, that we are grabbing by the leg um, and not by the chest or something. That's also part of why we actually had to set a bone... Uh, a, a bone input when we were grabbing because uh, that kind of determines where it is we're grabbing from. You can see I can grab from anywhere on the body and you, you should also be able to see too when I grab around more towards where the center of the skeletal mesh is I have a little bit more control over the rotation as opposed to if I grab the arm for example. If I grab by the arm I have very limited uh, control over how the rotation acts because it's being dragged down by the rest of the body. 
And you can also see too, I can grab by two different points, which also kind of affects how much control we have over this, uh, this ragdolled skeletal mesh. So I can grab from like the arm and the leg like that. Um, and then I can also do the same with this one over here. Let me see if I can reach that real quick, just from where I'm at. There we go. So I can grab by the foot. And you can see I can grab from right here. Um, this actually does feel a little bit lighter too. I actually don't know how what the weights are on the skeletal mesh in the physics assets, um, what, what it considers the mass to be. I, I would actually expect for that to feel a little bit lighter though. Um, but you can actually see I can drag both these around and move both these around pretty freely, um, for the most part at least. Um, so yeah, so. There we go. And with that, that's how we throw an enemy into a very simple limp state, as well as how to grab that skeletal mesh once it's gone into that limp state on any point on the body and be able to drag and move it around as we please. With that, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And I also wanna give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters who you should see over here on the right, as well as Casa who made this really awesome monitor artwork that you saw behind me in the intro and outro of this video. With that, I'll see you in the next reality.